Welcome again to another episode of Burnout and Beyond, where we talk with leaders in various industries about the impact that burnout has had on their life and what they are seeing in the industry and the trends that we can learn from to even recover and prevent our own burnout experiences. Today, we are grateful and pleased to have uh, our guest today, Claudia M. Allen. I'm not going to give you a whole government, but we're so glad to have you here with us in this space. Claudia, welcome. Thank you so much for having me, Vic. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Cla Claudia, as we're launching into this conversation about burnout, you know, if you're on an elevator with someone or uh, you're you're in Starbucks. Uh, I don't know where you go for your your pastries of choice, but they ask you who you are and what you do. Uh, yeah. Give us that answer that you give them in reply. Wow. Uh, well, things have changed for me lately. So okay. I think for right now, I would tell them that I am a local county government employee uh, that works for uh, an office of human rights and equity um, doing outreach work. Uh, so responsible for a lot of the uh, event planning and communications um, that really kind of serves as the front facing entity of kind of like what the office does. Uh, and then when I'm not doing that, I'm probably speaking, preaching, writing. Um, so that would probably be my elevator pitch. Okay. Wow, you you you're involved in so much, and so that there's so much there's so many potential access points to where burnout could be. Uh, oh, tell yes. us a, <laughs> tell us tell us a little bit about uh, you. You mentioned that you just transitioned, so tell us just a bit about your transition and how that is uh, coming along. Yeah, so you know, I'd say probably for the last 10 years, um, everything I've been doing around grad school and, you know, professional advancement has been to get a PhD in English and teach African American literature at a university. And sure. I'd say for the last five years, I have been very unhappy in that track. And okay. I ended up spending every waking moment I had, um, like going to like, community meetings and going to congressional forums that were open to the public because I do live in the, the uh, DMV area. Um, okay. And so every waking moment I had, I was doing something around social justice or public service. And okay. um, I felt like I was in the wrong career. And I think the thing that kept triggering in my brain was well, I need to be able to pay my bills. And, you know, academia and being a university professor, like that's job security. And, you know, go get this, Claudia, get this degree, get this job, and like you'll be set. And I was really tired, drained, and ultimately was experiencing a lot of burnout because I was pushing myself to do what I really wanted to do um, while simultaneously still having to fulfill all these other requirements within a completely different profession. And I got wow. to the point in COVID, really, in 2020, where I just said, you know what, like, I'm not going to keep asking anybody about this. I'm not going to talk to my mom about this. Like, I'm just going to make the decision. And I withdrew from my doctoral program without any job offers on the table, without any clear direction about what was next. Uh, I just said, I'm done. And I, after that, just really kind of poured myself into this work um, as an independent contractor. And then around April of this year, um, a local county official reached out to me on LinkedIn and was like, yo, like, we've been following you for about two and a half years. And like, we're just really, really hoping that you'll apply for this. And I did and went through the entire uh, interview process, very competitive. Um, and, you know, because I am a spiritual person, you know, I feel like the Lord blessed and, and really kind of opened this door for me. So um, it's very different. <laughs> it's not anything that I'm used to. And so there's a lot of getting used to working in this kind of environment. However, one thing that I have done is 
I did kind of turn off a lot of the extracurricular. So okay. really, I'm only doing my job right now. Okay. As an attempt to prevent burnout. But awesome. Vic, okay, I'm, I'm listening now. stressed just a little bit because okay. you know me. I'm very I'm I'm very go-getter. And as I've kind of explained, I am used to doing about 20 things at once. And so this is like the first time in a little over 10 years that I've not been doing 20 different things at once. And so I'm actually, you know, recalibrating. And there's wow. a lot of stress and drain that's coming as a result of reteaching myself that the yeah. former way I was working was actually unhealthy. And wow. so like wow. learning to be okay with the fact that I'm not doing something 24-7, 365 um, has been very difficult, to be honest. But I love my new job and definitely excited about it gearing up. I've only been working for about like 30 days. So okay. um, I'm sure maybe it'll it, things will probably get picking up, you know, around the fall and, and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Incredible, incredible. Congratulations again on Thanks, the man. on the opportunity. Super happy and proud of you um and uh I, I know that you will be a tremendous asset and bring um uh un, unlimited i believe value to the space um that 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 you are planted now this you you, you unloaded you unloaded a whole lot you unloaded a, a whole lot as it relates to just your experience and your life um you you hit on a couple of triggers uh that that i teach um, and emphasize with clients to really articulate. And one of those was unfulfilled living. And you, mm. you, you touched on the, the intersection of what you were supposed to be yeah. and who you were. Um, and uh, just kind of how there was almost like this miss of trying to make who you were supposed to be fit uh, within who you were. And uh, <laughs> it was like fitting fitting a circle around a square, you know, uh, the other way the saying goes. Yeah, but, you, square into a, <laughs> yeah, into a round hole. Yeah, absolutely. Like that's not how it works. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, Vic, it, it's so true. And like I was, I was telling somebody else this. Like in this in this role, mm -hmm. everything that I was doing in academia, in the faith based sphere, and in the magazine that I used to work for. It's all in this one role, like all. So whereas before it was like, oh, I can only do this in this sphere, so I'll work in this sphere. And then I also like to do this, so I'm gonna go work in this sphere simultaneously. And then I'm also gonna simultaneously work in this sphere. And then whatever I can't do in these three things, then I will do as an independent, you know, contractor, consultant, and entrepreneur. So that I basically, and my therapist told me this, Vic. I was working about three full-time jobs. And so then you come to a space where it's like, oh no, like there's one job where you can do all of this in your role in a proper timely fashion. And wow, awesome. it was very difficult with what with to, to what you're saying, because I think that the culture that I grew up in told me that there were only certain acceptable jobs and told me I had to go in one direction. And so I actually wasn't aware of other professions that were, like you're saying, a significantly better fit for not just my training, but just like my passion and like where my mm -hmm. heart for and like where mm -hmm. my heart was. And like um to to what you're saying, I really just want to encourage anybody like following your heart. It always sounds so cliche. And I never was one of those people that believed in it. Like, not at all. Like, follow the money, <laughs> follow the security, you know, but at the same time, you know, you can be financially secure and losing your mind um, because you're not able to do what you are actually designed to do. And so um, I, 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 I would love it if people were able to kind of do the introspective work 
to identify what is the thing that I'm designed to do and then what is the profession that provides the financial security that will permit me to do that. No, that's uh, you, you. You're nailing it. That that we have been created for a purpose, on purpose, and until we clarify what that purpose is, uh, many of us just spend our will assuming that success. Uh, we trade success for significance, mm. um, and so we're after salary and status, and we assume that if we have those two things, then we've been successful. Mm. And like what you're saying is, I, I'm pursuing purpose. I'm pursuing. I'm. I, I recognize the purpose and I'm going to pursue significant living. Yeah. Um, and as I'm doing that, I'm going to find the work that allows me to bring all of me yeah, in, into the space that I'm in. And so mm -hmm. that's, that's incredible to hear because yeah. to do that took courage, right? To do that took courage. And like you, you, you're, you're saying so much for someone that's listening to this, uh, this rebroadcast and realizing that, what you are, what is in your heart uh, is out there. Yes. But it, it but is. seeing it clearly won't come until courage is exercised. That's it. And, and so your, 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 your story, your testimony of, mm. of how you have uh, developed and, and just even what has occurred over the space and how you've navigated COVID and just a number mm. of other things that you've had to work through the soul work that you've had to do in order to come to this space is, is incredible. It's incredible. And so, um, you know, that, that's, that's awesome. You, you mentioned something else, you mentioned something mm -hmm. else. So it's so, it's so funny that in, in your introduction and sharing your story and just about your pivot uh, to your current, uh, your current position and role, you, you mentioned a couple of triggers uh, that often impacts um, clients that I work with. And one of those I call the talking tree. Hmm. And uh, the talking tree uh, leans from really kind of uh, pulls from the Pocahontas Disney film. And uh, one of the characters in the film was a willow tree, uh, yeah. which was her ancestor, her grandmother. And her the willow tree was a point, uh, really her compass uh, throughout mm -hmm. the movie where she got instruction, where she got perspective and uh, guidance for how to move and about it throughout the various challenges that she was facing. And so it was her grandmother, the willow tree that uh, gave her insight. And we all have our own talking trees, right? Mm. right? Mm. Our own, our very own compasses that orient our paradigm for mm -hmm. how we move in life and what we perceive as normal, what we perceive as right. Yeah. Um, and what we perceive as wise. And you mentioned something just about, not only about certain jobs being acceptable yeah uh, but also the idea that you can't stop like you just gotta be always on you you got to be doing so many different things at yeah. one time yeah. and so overcoming acknowledging that first but overcoming that is is so tremendous uh that's so tremendous because we're seeing that uh, the olympics are are just uh, uh ending in We've saw we've seen so many headlines about people, the impact of overwork on yeah. people's ability to be productive, not not just productive, yeah. but be their best selves. Absolutely. Um, and the impact that it's had on them. And so to hear you reiterate that leaders that are listening, uh, whether you're an activist uh, as Claudia is or you're in another sphere or uh, industry, the reality is you can't do it all. Uh, mm -hmm. That at best we're human and at worst we're human. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, tell me how you've had run-ins with burnout. Tell me about an episode that, that comes to mind of, yeah. of burnout in the arena as an activist. Man, so for me, I at the time was doing a lot of speaking, training, um, with faith-based communities, particularly in a denomination that um, believes it critical that you separate um, church and state. Um, and so yep. Yep. because they are very passionate about the separation of church and state, they oftentimes believe that one should also separate one's theology from one's politics. And so, you know, 
we shouldn't be talking about any social issues, any current yeah. events. Um, mm-hmm. God's going to take care of all of it. So mm-hmm. we don't need to worry about it kind of a mentality. Yeah. And so because that was the culture or uh, that is the culture, yeah. I yeah. ended up kind of taking it on myself to feel like um, if anybody within this denomination calls me because they want to counter that, it is my responsibility to go. And so there is no such thing as no. So there were times where um, I could have four different virtual events in one day. So, and I think I was doing this in addition to everything I was doing during the week, in addition to doing multiple events during the week, I would get to a Saturday and then I would preach for someone at 11 a.m. And then I would preach for someone in California at 2 p.m. Eastern, my time. And then I would do an afternoon event for somebody in Chicago at 7 p.m. And then I would get on a, a live event that I needed to speak for in Australia at 11 p.m. Listen, listen, are you just describing an international day? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and and like wow. the funny thing was, Vic, I made a, a Facebook post uh, because it came to the point where people were literally like following me. So like, it was like, oh, I want to see her do this. I want to see her do this. So I was joking <laughs> and I just made this post and I was like, all right, about to hop on this red. You know, I just finished you know, out here preaching for this church in DC, you know, I'm going to get on this, Mm -hmm. this virtual red eye, head out to California, get back on this virtual red eye, head back to the shy. I'll take a nap and do an overnight down to Australia. Meet me there (laughs) 11 PM. And like people were laughing, but they were like, but I'm going to be watching all of these things. (laughs) And, um, I was, I did that for about like three months straight. Wow. And um, at first, I didn't think that there was anything wrong with it. Um, I wasn't necessarily feeling any burnout or any pressure um, because I think part of it is a personality thing for me. I've, I've mm-hmm. been like this since I was a kid. So I mm-hmm. have operated like this um, for many, many years. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it really took uh, some external forces to really just kind of make me aware of the fact that the way that I was working was not sustainable. And so it wasn't that I had even reached burnout. It was more that people were saying, this is really good what you're doing. And we want you to be able to do this long term. And so at this rate, you will run out of gas um, and you're not going to have anything left to give. Um, and so you've got to begin to slow down. The other reason I knew that I was, um, reaching burnt out, burnout or got burnt out was because by the time I reached December of last year, I shut it all down and I went home, drove home to Michigan to see my, to see my mom and family for the holidays Mm -hmm. and just shut everything down for about a month and a half. I came back to the DC area mid January and, um, during that entire time, Vic, oh my goodness, it was fantastic. <laughs> I just slept. <laughs> I had, and the I think the the main thing was I had no desire to do anything. So like people were hitting me up like, hey, can you please preach for me to do blah, blah, blah? No. Can you please do this panel? No. Can you? And it wasn't even difficult because I was so spent. Like I had been going from May like that schedule that I just described, I yeah. did that from May 2020 through November 2020, straight no breaks. Wow. And so I intentionally got to December and was like, all right, we're shutting it down and you know we'll get back going again in January. And so I think that that's, that was very much so an indicator for me that, okay, your body's feeling it, your mind is feeling it, um, And now it's time to, as we're coming into the new year, create the structure around this that's actually healthy. Like 
this is not healthy. Whether or not you feel it is actually irrelevant. It's, it's just not healthy. So let's create a healthy structure moving forward. I can't say I did. Keep the, going. No, no, I'm listening. The, you, the you. best, right? I, for my field, February is like Christmas. So I make the joke <laughs> with people that me not accepting somebody's invitation in the month of February is like Santa Claus choosing to take a break at Christmas time. Like, <laughs> just not <Yeah>. fair. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and so what ended up happening, dude, is I had 20 different speaking engagements in a 28-day month. Wow. And wow. So in it, and we're... We're still working for the magazine. We're still working for the church. Like we still have other responsibilities to do, right? And um, I, I hit a very real burnout at that time. But one thing that I can say with myself is um, I try not to do like to do months like that back to back. So it's like I okay. when I know February is going to be like this, I really don't function like that in March and April. Um, you know, it's a it's a it's a bit of a stop. I was still doing stuff but like sure. um i wasn't doing like 20. so yeah. um yeah so it's it's kind of like <laughs> it's a dance like trying to figure out like you know when do i need to do these kinds of hardcore bursts and of od work od non-stop you know kind of hustle grind it out like you know like everyone talks about and then when can i pull back and um just operate at a you know a, a better rate a better you know level and so this yeah. new role is just more like it's turned all of it off <laughs> and so that's been great i feel rested and fantastic um but sometimes i'm bored to be honest uh okay. I'm, I'm i'm very bored i'm very like I need to do something. I, I like, I get a little antsy, but you know, I made a promise with myself and my, my therapist that I would take the first six months of this job, you know, to focus on this and, and not function as I have been functioning in the past. So now I'm in this wow. period of withdrawal, if you would. Um, I, you, you're nailing it. That, those, you took the words out of my mouth. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's what it Man, is. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> you took the words out of my mouth. That's exactly what it is. Wow. That's exactly what it is. No, absolutely. I never thought about that. That's exactly what it is, right? That that burnout is is a syndrome that we can be addicted to because it's a cultural social paradigm. Um, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> there is, uh, in fact, in the Japanese culture, there is a word that they have developed for death by overwork. Kuroshi mm. is the term. And so it's it's something that is listed on death certificates. Um, really? <laughs> right. People are identifying this. Now, obviously, there are some uh, insurance reasons and other things that could impact uh, why it's not used here. Um, mm -hmm. But again, the idea of burnout is not something that's new to the scene. It's been it was introduced by Dr. Herbert Fordenberger back in 1974 mm -hmm. and was it, it was dismissed by and large as pseudoscience. Um, and so, no, what you're saying makes absolute sense because we have been socially wired to, to not be able to do one thing well, to be a master of one and be satisfied with that. Mm. Um, and so the, the, uh, you know, just the idea that we have to be Jack of all trades or uh, Jill of all trades and, 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 and not be able to sink our teeth into one thing. Um, and, and, and put all of our focus, uh, so to speak, our eggs into that basket for a season. Mm -hmm. um, th th there's a powerful reality in looking at nature. Uh, one of the high emphasis of my framework is studying nature um, and the natural rhythms of life and drawing from their lessons for solving uh, this, this burnout pandemic. Um, and, and one of the things that we see, uh, if you're a music, if you're a lover of music, as I am, as I know that you are, there's rhythm in music, right? There's time where it's moving, 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 moving. And then there's periods even between that where there are rests. 
mm -hmm. uh, where there are breaks. And a song is not a song if it doesn't have both, mm, right? That's good. A song isn't a song if it doesn't have both. And so the necessity to have both of them um, uh, uh, woven together is necessary. You know, I just want to encourage you as you are going through uh, your, your six month withdrawal uh, to realize that even in nature, that development happens in stages. Mm. Right. So as the forest, uh, when you look at the devastating effect that the forest has on um, that the forest has on the uh, rather the wildfire has on a forest. Yeah. Everything doesn't come back at once. True. Right. It starts yeah. with the weeds and the grass growing. Then mm -hmm. that impacts how the small trees and the shrubs are able to grow. Then that affects how the, you know, the largest shade tolerant trees that that we know the magnificence forest for um then they start to bloom and and, and really create that bound that ecological balance and so mm -hmm. you know don't 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 uh don't despise the weeds don't despise yeah. you know ensuring that the ground that you are building is healthy and uh, mm -hmm. i know that it's going to continue to impact the work that you do listen listen those that are watching this if you haven't heard claudia uh, speak present uh preach uh, you you you're missing a treat you're missing a treat <laughs> just just before we we have we have a little bit more in our conversation but uh just before we we go you you'll have to share with us how we can connect with you uh, sure, in order sure. to 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 uh, uh for, for those that are looking to partner with you will be able to uh, to do so but we'll do that we'll do that but but just before we we kind of um uh, we, we kind of move to that in as a government worker as an activist yeah you mentioned as well about some developing your own prevention strategy um prevention strategy for uh not going back where you were yeah uh, what's one thing that for those that are in the activist space, what's one thing that you would uh, kind of give them as a takeaway um, for practicing prevention? Yeah, man, I would really say mindfulness. Okay. And I know like, I'm sure all the Christians might feel a way, you know, when you think that word, you know, sometimes mm -hmm. it has some negative connotations to it. Sure. Um, but I think one thing that I started doing recently that I've been very intentional about that has been fantastic is um, I started like doing different breathing exercises. Awesome. So I will just kind of like sit in and I have like a closet that's, you know, kind of like a prayer room meditation mm -hmm. space. And so I just go yep. in there, I close the door and like I do my my breathing exercises for a few minutes. You know, I might listen to uh, some calming music. Um, I read the Bible, I journal, I reflect and just try to take a lot of quiet time. Um, just because kind of like what you're saying, it's very easy to get busy. Mm -hmm. And if you're in this space of like constant motion and co constant movement, movement, and on top of that, if you're an activist, then that means that you're more than likely doing a lot of different things at a lot of different hours. So you don't actually have a consistent routine because particularly like a sleep routine, things like this, because you might be sleeping on the Capitol steps with Corey Bush, uh, you know, for X number of days, because that's what you're passionate about. Or uh, maybe you're going to a march um, and you're going to be out there all day. You got there at 10, you're not leaving till five. Um, wow. And so Maybe you're trying to record some podcasts or write articles or read and research to understand more about this issue so that you can, you know, prepare either your organization or, you know, your particular representative you know, with the proper data and information. And so either way, it's just very time consuming work. And if you don't actually cut out like intentional set aside time for rest, then you will, you will crash, not even just burn out. And this is why we have seen so many different activists actually take their own lives. Um, there have been a variety of activists within the last few years who have committed suicide. 
um, just because the pressure Mm -hmm. of what they were doing on a consistent basis really got to them and the negativity. Um, Mm -hmm. This is also not work where you are rewarded. More than likely, you're doing something to agitate, which means you're disrupting something. You're bothering somebody. You're telling somebody that what they're doing and the way that they're operating is incorrect. So that means you're in a constant state of confrontation. So that means you're around conflict. So it's like there's a heightened um, emotional burden to the kind of work that you're doing in addition to the fact that it's time consuming, in addition to the fact that you're not making a lot of money. Let's be 100000 about that. In addition to the fact that um, I'm sure you probably have 100,000 people in your life telling you you should be doing something else. Wow. And so all of that will wear and tear on the mind, on the body, and on the soul. And if you do not have clarity around yourself that this is what I was designed and purposed to do, this is what I have been fit on the earth to address. Um, And if you don't have the proper mindfulness practices in place, you absolutely will crash. I am telling you that right now. It's not possible to not crash. Um, The only reason I've been able to deal with the fact that 20,000 people call me on the phone trying to get me to be something else (laughs) with job offers or people coming on my my social media telling me that I'm Beelzebub and the spawn of Satan um and every other name communist socialist that they can think of is because i go in my closet and so when i come out of my closet i have clarity about what god has said about me what god Mm -hmm. called and asked me to do and so therefore i am unfazed by what you wish, what you dream, what you want, and what you think that I am. And um, if you don't get that kind of clarity, this will break you. And I think that it's not even just activism. It could be entrepreneurship. It can be any, uh, any job. If you thrust yourself into it 110%, 210%, without the proper uh, restfulness, mm-hmm interjected then you will crush underneath that pressure absolutely uh, no. Claudia, you 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 shared so much with this there's somebody that's listened to this that's listened to this conversation and will say i've got to talk to her she has to be at our next event she has to share at this or or i know you're taking a break i know you're taking a break and uh, but but people want to connect with you people want to connect sure. with you and how, how what's the best way to to do that Yes, absolutely. You can follow me on social media. I am Claudia Allen on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Um, Anybody that wants me to come anywhere, please go to my website, www.claudiamallen.com, and you'll be able to find the request form there. Uh, You can also uh, find some of my previous speaking engagements on YouTube. Um, So if you type my name in YouTube, that should come up as well. So yeah. Awesome. 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 Again, you, you heard she's all over social media on Facebook, mm-hmm. Twitter, uh, Instagram. Uh, I am Claudia Allen. And then also go and check out her website. Uh, you can uh, Claudia M Allen dot com. Um, and I believe she's also on LinkedIn, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Uh, mm-hmm. And uh, you can also uh, find her on on that platform as well. Uh, Claudia, we thank you so much for this conversation and this time and the insight that you've shared with us uh, into your life, into your industry, uh, and into uh, your your window of how burnout has affected you and and even your recovery from it has has made you better. Has made you better. Thanks so well, much we for will, having me. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. We'll have to do it again some point after absolutely. the six months is over and, 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 and <laughs> yeah. check in to see. We'll check in in twenty twenty three. Let's see how I'm That's doing. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we have to check in, but we also want to thank those that are viewing this for for watching uh, this latest conversation of burnout and beyond. And always remember 
that whether you are preventing or whether you have experienced burnout, that remember that burnout is not the end, but it's an invitation to begin again. Peace out.